love to be in Alexander's head just for a few hours. He is autistic. He is nonverbal. He's having a hard time uh, going through puberty at this point right now, so he's having issues with the changes, but he's still my peaceful little Alexander. When you have a child with autism, you can see everything coming in. Everything is coming in, but it's going to the wrong places. Everything is too much. Um, touch can be overwhelming. Sound, change in routine. It's just, you're trying to raise like the most sensitive little person. I need to shave you soon, Xander. I'm not looking forward to that. So much of him is just a 14 year old boy, but he can't go ride his bike. He can't hang out with his friends and, you know, have airsoft guns and do all those, you know, the things that he, he should be doing. No. So he's angry and he's sad and he doesn't understand why and I truly feel for him. No headbutt. No headbutt. Nice, okay. He really has no outlet. He goes into the backyard and you know he looks at the koi pond and he goes up to his room and he takes a shower. He's constantly just fluctuating between the few things that he is able to do independently that he likes. And I feel bad for him. It's also things like that that make you realize it's time for him to have a 24-hour staff. So, you know, it's just time for someone to step in and be stronger and more awake <laughs> than I am. And it hasn't been as hard to accept or deal with because we know what that process looks like and what it will mean. Alexander, just like Connor did, has outgrown our little family here. Connor. My oldest is 19. Were you a good boy at school? Yeah. And he has autism. He lives in the Rome Trade Winds residential facility. Put on a napkin. Yeah. Luckily, in New York State, um, the school district pays for the education part of it until if a child is disabled until they're 21. Insurance and Medicaid, because he is both of the boys are disabled they're able to access basically state health care which provides this opportunity for them to live in this you know in a safe environment it's not elaborate but it's comfortable and it's fully staffed and connor has what he needs but i wonder about that with alexander when he when he does make that move if it's the summer or this fall or next spring again there's that emptiness, that void of, you suddenly have to refind yourself as a mom because you've, you're the sun, <laughs> or you're the earth revolving around this, um, this little being. <sighs> but I, I know I'll need to be by myself and I'll be emotional that week. But I also will know that it's, that it's for the best and I'll know that I'm going to be okay and he's gonna be okay. I want them to be happy in their skin. I think that both of them will. I think they're really special, really likable kids. There's really only two options. You can either become stronger or you can become weaker. There's a fine line between the two and you just try to do your best every day.